Good morning, folks. We've got a quiet sun, like the darkest moments of night before the dawn here in the last months before sunspots return again for a new cycle. Coming over to spaceweathernews.com, we find the last day on our star was quiet. We do have coronal holes, but no sunspots or flares, and this lack of activity is driving higher cosmic rays here at Earth during sunspot minimum, which is a key point coming up in today's show. But first, let's look at the solar wind. Calming down from what we know is a moderate intensity range to begin with, this leaves geomagnetic conditions meeting even quieter states this morning. It should be noted that the strongest storms on Earth right now are indeed firing up in the central states. The system will get stuck here and throw down major storms until it departs. Even if it's not tornadoes, we've had derecho conditions, hail, and flash flooding. I also want to use the geocolor overlay from Himawari to see it was a one-day volcano eruption at the Kuril Islands. We saw it erupt yesterday, and now the plume is heading into the North Pacific Low. No more emissions visible from the islands. Let's begin the science with the global weather data sets. For those unaware, the Euro and NASA data sets have never lined up in terms of claimed global temps, land or sea, and today we learn that even in the latest release for sea surface temperatures, it seems scientists of the world will still have to select between diverging models for the last few decades. They cannot agree on the actual temperature. Let's move up a level from the atmosphere to the ionosphere and electron belts. You may have heard about the idea to use transmitter radio signals to knock out electrons and protect Earth from space weather. You may have also heard me saying it won't work. That's the idea here today. We may be able to modify the lowest energy electrons, but we can't touch the relativistic ones or stop a major solar storm in that way. Now, critical lesson for most here. Most have heard of the Maunder Minimum, the last grand solar minimum, and maybe even the Dalton Minimum of 200 years ago, which was about half the depth in terms of lacking sunspots. You might even know that the last mini ice age occurred during the Maunder period, but you might not know that without the Sporer Minimum, we may not have had the mini ice age at all. Folks, the Maunder Minimum is like a bite of dessert after a huge meal by comparison to the Sporer Minimum. Looking at the last 2,000 years reconstruction, we find the sporer minimum as deep as it gets. Having lasted so long, it's like a grand solar cycle was skipped entirely. More than double that timeline of reconstruction and the sporer minimum still stands out. But also the fact that we're coming off the peak solar activity of thousands of years during the century of global warming. And now the full reconstructed timeline. The sporer minimum is still the lowest. Combined with the Maunder period, it's easy to see why we had the little ice age. And you have to go back to the end of the last full ice age about 11,000 years ago to find higher solar activity than we just had during the, quote, period of global warming. Why the mini ice age during solar minima? It's the galactic cosmic rays that surge when the sun goes to sleep. They produce extremely reflective clouds, hail nucleation, and through albedo combined with that slightly lower solar output in those times, causes the Earth to slip into snow. Folks, last year I mentioned that we had reached the cosmic ray maximum of modern times, hitting the marks of the last solar cycle and aiming higher. Well, academia and paper publishing does work slowly, doesn't it? While the hydrogen and helium spectra are just shy of the 2010 marks, the linear energy transfer spectra is at the 2010 marks already. And because it takes months and months to publish, we have already gone higher. We'll continue to go higher for 6 to 12 months after the sunspots return. Welcome to the modern cosmic ray maximum. The effects were so bad last time that ancient geniuses who invented philosophy, architecture, and geometry were left blaming God for the turn taken by their world. They couldn't explain it. Many of those effects coming are found in our book, Weatherman's Guide to the Sun student favorite textbook available at otf.cells.com along with other stuff. You might know we don't have Patreon or donations. Get something cool for your support. And finally, in that realm, after three years of your asking, we do finally have a women's tank. It is loose fit, ultra light, perhaps a cami underneath, and if you like them tight, please get one size smaller. Again, they fit big. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 4.55 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.